السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونشكره ونستعين به ونسترشده ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وقائدنا ومرشدنا وحجتنا وشفيعنا محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله وضاعته وأحثكم على التمسك بهدي قرآنه وسنة نبيه فقد قال الله جل من قائل أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما صدق الله العظيم my dear 
brothers and sisters, I had planned to continue talking about the topic I raised last week in the khutbah because the issue of having to choose between customs and habits and Islamic teachings is a very important issue and some people tend to lump all Islamic teachings and what Islam wants us to do under one title and that is the title of haram or halal we know that there are gradations there are levels from the halal to the haram that we really need to understand and appreciate and not to give people a guilt feeling simply because they made a mistake and tell them you committed haram because you can imagine what that may do to their morale to their spirituality but I'm not going to talk about that maybe inshallah next week I changed my mind last night when I received a call from a crying mother who lost her baby immediately after birth to death she said I was given my baby and I held my baby for six hours then they took it away from me and you know, quite often when we are on the other side of the calamity of the test that strikes on people, we do not think of certain important things that comes to their consciousness, to their mind. She said, I cannot sleep at night since the day they took my son away from me when I am under the comfort of my blanket, I say, how can I sleep feeling that my son is in the cold of the grave, feeling that my son is in the darkness of the, of the grave? And what I say, but you know, she should understand. No, 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 no. You cannot really argue with a mother about these things and I did relate to her not to feel guilty at all because when Musa alayhi salam after burying his brother Harun in the grave he felt so uptight and asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ya Allah how could my brother be in the darkness of the grave being in the tight environment of the great Musa asked that question and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel to tell him and assure him that if I were taking care of him while living in this dunya wouldn't I do more after interning him in the grave that was with Musa and Harun and you know she felt guilty she said could i have been responsible that i moved in a certain way while sleeping that caused the death of my baby while in my womb could i you know all these things all these things you have to give examples that she was not alone i told her the story of al abd al salih that we traditionally call al khudr you know, when Musa alayhi salam accompanied him and saw Al-Khudr, who by the way, represents the fate of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because, you know, at the end he said, وَمَا فَعَلْتُهُ عَنْ أَمْرِي I did not do those strange things that seemed strange to you because of my own intuition. I did it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directed me to do it. That's why it was strange to Musa that Al Abd al Salih went and killed that innocent boy. He said, How could you do that? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in His wisdom, in His, He replaces things in a way that we don't understand. So, anyway, after speaking with her, it struck me that the last 10 days our community saw death 
in different shapes, saw death coming at us from different routes. We had to bury the baby that was prematurely born dead. We had to bury a baby, as I mentioned, who was held by his mother for six hours and then had to be taken to the cemetery. We had to bury, you know, a very old man, 92 years old. We had to bury yesterday two individuals at the same time. We had to run from one gravesite to another. One of them died because of a horrible accident. The other one came from Pakistan, never in his life left Pakistan. He came to visit his son. Two months after that, Allah willed that the six feet where he will be laid to rest is in Canada. He died in Canada. And his son, he said to me, he said, I never thought that I will bury my father in Canada. We saw death of a very healthy young man, 23 years old. He has a sister and his parents sent both of them from Saudi Arabia where they work. You know, two doctors, mother and father, they sent them to University of Toronto. And he was in his last year about to graduate in mathematics. He went to sleep last Sunday. He did not wake up on Monday. There was no drugs, no foul play, nothing. And the coroner has to sign natural causes. One of us, when we read, we hear about the 23 years old, we say, wait a minute. When we shouldn't say that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, you are going to witness death at different stages of life. He told us about how we start as a nutfah, thumma alaqa, thumma mudghatin, mukhallaqatin wa ghayri mukhallaqa. And then he says, وَنُقِرُّ فِي الْأَرْحَامِ مَا نَشَاءُ إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّى لِنُبَيِّنَ لَكُمْ وَمِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُتَوَفَّى وَمِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرَدُّ إِلَىٰ أَرْضَ لِلْعُمْرِ لِكَيْ لَا يَعْلَمَ مِنْ بَعْدِ عِلْمٍ شَيْئًا That death will encounter you at different stages. Some of you are going to stay in the womb to أجل مسمى So they may die before you know, they will witness life as we know it. Some are going to die as young children. Others will reach that prime age and then will die. Two weeks ago, or perhaps three weeks, 40 years old from our community died. We witness those, those who are very sick and those who are very healthy. So we have to be prepared. We have to know that death, no one, no one would in the right frame of Iman and spiritual mind or heart would say that someone, as some people say, so and so died prematurely. You know, subhanallah, you know, how could we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if to say, Ya Allah, you took this person away from us before his time, why did you do that? How could we question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You know, death, death befalls us and we'd better be prepared. You know, we know the story that when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam held his son Ibrahim, 16 months old, took him to the grave and he cried. A warm tear ran down his cheek. And Abdul Rahman ibn Awf said, Ya Rasulullah, even you, how could, you know, you know where Ibrahim, your son, is heading. Why are you crying? As if, I mean, you know, they have to understand every move, every word that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uttered or did. So he said, O oh, Abdul Rahman, it is a form of mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's okay to cry. But something happened on that occasion when Umar ibn al-Khattab turned to a corner of that cemetery and started to cry profusely. And then when Rasulullah got out of the grave, he went, he said, Ya Umar, why are you crying like this? He said, Ya Rasulullah, 
your son Ibrahim had you to make the proper dua for him. What if you are not around when I die? Who will make dua for me? How would I face the two angels who will interrogate me? How will I answer their questions immediately? The ayah from Surah Ibrahim, the name is not the son of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is Prophet Ibrahim, that's the name of the surah. An ayah came to assure all of us, and starting with Umar ibn al-Khattab, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يثبت الله الذين آمنوا بالقول الثابت في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ويضل الله الظالمين ويفعل الله ما يشاء that Allah will make firm those who had faith in this dunya and will give them a firm stand when they are interrogated by the two angels in the grave so don't worry if you prepare for that you will be able to answer that's why we only remind and give support to him or her who is you know being laid in the grave and say Allahumma idha ja'ahu al-malakan al-mukallafan bi su'alihi wa sa'alahu man rabbuk Allahumma a'inhu ala an yaqula rabbi Allah wa idha sa'alahu ma dinuk اللهم أعنه على أن يقول ديني الإسلام وإذا سأله ما كتابك اللهم أعنه على أن يقول القرآن الكريم كتابي وإذا سأله ماذا تقول في الرجل الذي بعث فيكم اللهم أعنه على أن يقول هو محمد رسول الله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وأنا وأنتم على شهادة أن لا إله إلا الله وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ But notice, please, when we tell them that when they come, because they are not there while we are there, they wait for us to leave. That's why we have to leave very quickly, except for the family that makes dua, but unable to help in that test. Because in dunya, when we are tested, there may be people who will help us. But after we are interned in our graves, we are on our own. We cannot get anyone to help. That's why we make the dua, Ya Allah, help him. Ya Allah, be with him. So we have to prepare because no one from there on into the barzakh, into that ultimate final exam when we stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. As we read in Surah Abasa. يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ لِكُلِّ مِرِئٍ مِّنْهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذٍ شَأْنٌ يُغْنِيهِ The day when each one of us will run away from his own sibling, will run away from his parents, will run away from his spouse, his children, because each one has... A case of their own they have to look after their own affair you are alone so you have to prepare for that moment and we have to understand that we belong to one of three categories the first category is of those who don't believe in the akhirah they don't believe in god they will may allah protect us from even falling into that category. These are the people, you know, who will say, as Allah describes, نَمُوتُ وَنَحْيَا وَمَا يُهْلِكُنَا إِلَّا الدَّهْرِ As we read in Surah Al-Jathiyah, that we live and then we die when our organs age, when we are no longer able to sustain life. So we die. But I just said there are healthy people who die. There are people who are young. Who says that you have to wait for old age in order to die? And those same people, those same people in Surah Yaseen, وَضَرَبَ لَنَا مَثَلًا وَنَسِيَ خَلْقَهُ In a way of arguing that how could you be so silly, so naive, to believe that there will be life after you die. 
and he started to argue who would you know bring back those rotten bones back to life وضرب لنا مثلا ونسي خلقه قال من يحيي العظام وهي رميم قل يحييها الذي انشاها اول مره وهو بكل شيء عليم that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know you want to, to argue and you say who is going to do then remember that the one who created those bones out of nothing will create a form to house our souls after we die but this is the argument of those people who don't believe in God but there is another category which is of people who believe in God but they are in a state of ghafla they are oblivious to the hereafter they they are indifferent they are not thinking of that continuation of their life into the hereafter they live for this dunya they collect and they do whatever they can not realizing that they are collecting for their heirs they are not collecting for themselves because it is for the people who will inherit them why why do you have to do that why do you have to do that you have to really think of where you are heading where you are heading اقترب للناس حسابهم وهم في غفلة معرضون at the beginning right the first ayah of surah al-anbiya that the hisab the ultimate judgment is coming close but people are oblivious they are in a state of ghafla and at the beginning of the heart of the quran again surah yasin yasin wal quran al hakim innaka lamin al mursalin ala sirat mustaqim tanzil al aziz al rahim litunzir qauman ma unzir abauhum fahum ghafilun fahum ghafilun now we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to alert us, make us alert all the time and always be focused on Jannah insha'Allah, on that ultimate examination where, where we'll be alone, starting from the grave to the barzakh, to the day of resurrection, to the day of congregation, to the day of hisab, to the day of jaza. All of that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to stand firm. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فيا فوز المستغفرين make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He will accept our dua. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah وعلى آله وصحبه ومن وله رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Now the third category that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us belong to is for those who believe in the akhirah and prepare for the akhirah as we read in surah al-Isra وَمَنْ أَرَادَ الْآخِرَةَ وَسَعَى لَهَا سَعْيَهَا وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنْ فَأُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ سَعْيُهُمْ مَشْكُورًا That those people who want the Akhirah, who want to be rewarded in the Akhirah and prepared for it while they had strong faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, accepted all tests and tribulations, and said, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah, inna lillah, wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Those people who prepared, فَأُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ سَعْيُهُمْ مَشْكُورًا As we uh, uh, find in Al-Bukhari, Al-Bayhaqi, and Tirmidhi, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, or once said to Abdullah ibn Umar, the son of Umar ibn al-Khattab, كُنْ فِي الدُّنْيَا كُنْ فِي الدُّنْيَا غَرِيبًا أَوْ عَابِرَ سَبِيلٍ That be in this dunya as a stranger or as uh, someone in transition, uh, passerby. Uh, don't stick to this dunya. This is, by the way, not to say that 
forget about this dunya. We know what Umar, uh, what uh, Ali bin Abi Talib uh, said. Uh, uh, you know, عيش لدنياك كأنك تعيش أبدا وعمل لآخرتك كأنك تموت غدا أو اعمل لدنياك كأنك تعيش أبدا وعمل لآخرتك كأنك تموت غدا that you have to live and prepare for this dunya as if you are going to live forever and you have to prepare for the akhira as if you are going to die tomorrow there's a balance Islam does not say come every day and sit in that corner and forget about you know when when Umar ibn al-Khattab was told about two brothers, you know, someone he used to see in a corner, you know, all the time he said, who feeds this person? They said his brother works and, you know, gives him. He said his brother is better than him. So there has to be balance. There has to be balance. And, uh, you know, when Imam al-Shafi'i was in his uh, uh, dying moments, al-Muzni, uh, came to him and he said, كيف أصبحت? You know, how do you feel this morning? What did Al-Imam Al-Shafi'i say? He said, أصبحت للدنيا مفارقا وللإخوان تاركا ولكأس الموت شاربا وعلى الله واردا ولا أدري أتكون روحي في الجنة فأهنيها أم إلى النار فأعزيها. This is Imam Shafi'i. When he asked, when he was asked, how do you feel? He said, I feel certain that I'm leaving this dunya, and I feel that I'm going to 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 miss those I'm leaving behind, and I know that. I'm going to taste the throes of death and I am going definitely to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I don't know whether my soul will end up in Jannah so I could congratulate it or it will go to the hellfire and I give it my condolences. This is, this is how, how we should prepare and insist on being in that third category of the believers who prepare for the akhirah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim wa barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim fil alameen innaka hamidun majid Allahumma aghfir lana dhunubana wa khatayana wa israfana fi amrina wa kaffir anna sayyatina Allahumma arina al-haqq haqqan wa arzuqna attiba'ah wa arina al-batila batilan وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم علمنا من ديننا ما جهلنا وذكرنا منه ما نسينا وكن معنا ولا تكن علينا عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون I would like somebody to be a muballigh, meaning, you know, our imam will lead us outside, but we need somebody to repeat after him because there is no sound system. So who will do that? Okay, inshallah, brother Adnan will do that. Just so everyone knows, there was an accident. Apparently, somebody hit a, a hydro pole, so the electricity is out for the entire almost White Oaks area. That beeping sound is the alarm. We can't shut it off. We apologize for the inconvenience. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar,
الْجَحِيمَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى وَأَمَّا 